You know, I was going to talk about quantum physics. Then I began to restudy it. <laughs> and I realized all the great masters of quantum physics were as lost as I was. <laughs> so I decided to talk about quantum people, of whom we really have a great blessing here today. Thank you. Some of you may or may not know that I have been very blessed to have known some of the great people of our time. That's why the... Okay. And to realize that they were quantum people. And I'd like to tell you about some of my friends and how they lived and how they thought and what they gave to the world. The first one was, I went to one of the great schools in New York City. I went to PS6. Is there anybody else here who went to PS6? No? Yes? I got, we have three, four. <laughs> but they would take us to meet the great elders of the time. And the first one they took us to was Helen Keller, who, as you know, by the time she was a year old, she was deaf and blind and had some other issues. But she got up there and she talked to us in this luminous voice of someone who has never heard speech. And I was so moved that I did what I usually did. Does any child want to come up and speak to the speaker? Me, 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 me. So I went up there and she read my lips. And I said, blurted with a child's savage honesty, why are you so happy? And she laughed and laughed and laughed. She said, I'm given to imitation, so I'll tell you what you sound like. My child, it is because I live each day as if it were my last, and life in all its moments is so full of glory. Was she damaged? Some people would think so. Was she damaged? Not at all. Helen Keller. And then the following month, they brought in Albert Einstein to talk to us. This was quite a school. <laughs> And uh, he talked about his mathematics and his theories. And uh, are there any questions? He said. And one of the really snotty boys raised his hand and said, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be as smart as you? And he said, ah, read fairy tales. <laughs> well, we didn't much care for that at all. And then another Nasty boy, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be smarter than you? Read more fairy tales. <laughs> but I get, got to talk to him afterwards and I said, Mr. Einstein, you're, you're talking about something wonderful. You're, you're talking about the spirit of science, are you not? And how it needs a new story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is, you know. It is the spirit of science. People think I'm so bright, listen, I'm really stupid. But what it is I do is I have a great imagination. And I step on the, you know, the light beam and I go, whoa, you know, through the world. That's what it is. It is my imagination. Powerful, powerful, powerful kind of knowing. PS6. Did anybody here go to PS6? No? New York? All right. Well, go back to school and go to PS6, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, then there was my great friend who moved in with us, Margaret Mead. Margaret Mead, the anthropologist. And, uh, oh my. She was tough. <coughs> she moved in. She said, my daughter's working 3,000 miles away. I need another daughter. That's probably you. <coughs> also, I said, well, is it my mind you like? 
no, it's your cooking. <laughs> she was a big eater. <coughs> so, but people say, who was the best of all? Here's the story. By the way, could I have hot water? all cough with me if you like. <laughs> I was running to school down Park Avenue, 86th Street, and I ran into an old man. I knocked the wind out of him. I picked him up. And I said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. No, 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 that is all right. Tell me, what is it that you love most about being alive? And we talked about being alive. And we talked my first understanding of quantum physics, how everything is interrelated with everything else. And that we are the universe in miniature. But we also talked about love. What would he talk about? Love being the very center of life of our existence and of the holy. And he told me his name. His name was Teilhard de Chardin. He lived down the block from me, the man I knocked over on the street. I was very fortunate. <laughs> you know. But people say to me, of all the people I know, who was the most interesting? Without a question, it was Margaret Mead. I need another daughter, so it's probably you, I told you. That was the, and she moved in with us because of my cooking, you know. But she also sent me all over the world so that I have worked in 101 countries trying to be of use, <laughs> trying to help people understand the new extraordinary time that we're in. Yes, terrible things are happening, but extraordinary possibilities are breaking through. You are part of an evolutionary happening. And what I mean by that is something is shifting in your brain that you've been coded for. And what is the coding? What is this coding? It's actually the emergence of a new humanity. How many of you wake up in the middle of the night and you know it? And first you try to psychologize and say, oh, it was this, it was that, or it was what my father did, my mother did. No, 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 no. You are part of an evolutionary event. We have gotten to a place in our understanding that we have some understanding of the nature of the universe and how you are a fractal equivalent of this universe in your own space-time suit. This is brand new. And this is something that the great new scientists truly, truly understand. We have one of the great new scientists sitting right here. <laughs> Would you introduce him, please? This is Gary Zukov, who's one of... <laughs> who has also been part there in the frontier of the understanding that you are the universe in miniature, that we have access to a level of mind and understanding and co-creation that as far as we know was never known before. I told you about Teilhard, didn't I? And how I ran into him and knocked him down. But it's something else, dear friends, something else that is happening that I don't, I think this is the first time in human history that it has happened. Margaret Mead took no, what is the word? They, they, they took no, what is it? No prisoners. Hmm? No prisoners. Boy, that was true. You know. <laughs> and, um, what was so fascinating about her is that she was extremely kind and also very mean, almost at the same time. 
Some of you knew her. I can see some, the faces going up and down. But the thing was also, she knew that we were, and this is back in the 50s and 60s, she knew that we were at the place of a major transitional stage for the earth, for the people, for the heart, and above all, for the spirit. That unless we could live with heart and spirit and the charge that we feel within us and the realize that we have shifted, you are not the same person you were five years ago. How many of you have noted this? Something else is growing. And this is what happens in evolution. And evolution happens also because timing, place, rightness, and something that was merely latent in our minds and bodies becomes overt. How many of you are aware of that? Something is emerging, and it is a new kind of human who is adequate to universal means to living not just on a marvelous planet, but being ones who have to nurture the evolution of ourselves and of each other as we become co-creators in the evolutionary adventure in which we're in. And a lot of the pathos, I don't say pathology, I'm nice about it, but a lot of the pathos of our time is this fact that we are in jump time. This is jump time, when things that were sort of wandering around in a suddenly, whoa, begin to move into a oneness, and we feel this oneness, and we know that we're part of it, but we don't quite know what is expected of us or what we should be doing. How many of you have noticed this? Dear God, please give me my, give me my orders. <laughs> So what you do is kindness, deep seeing of people, opening to the understanding, the understanding that is moving us along into a whole new domain of being human. Kindness, deep seeing, love, and also knowing that you are God's stuff wearing a space-time suit. <laughs> and you are more than that. You are the evolutionary happening that is happening in your mind, your body. Of course you're lost, we have to be, because we can't be found unless we're lost. But foundness is coming after you. You're singing this morning the beauty of the words spoken that was foundness. That's what you're doing. You're doing the foundness. Whole new word, whole new possibility. I remember, again, something about Margaret. Uh, we were working with this beautiful young man named Alex. And he seemed very sad. I said, Alex, what's the matter? Oh, Jean, I'm so deeply in love. You are, Alex? Uh, is she a nice young girl? Well, she's not exactly young. And I'm not too sure that she exactly could be called a girl, but oh, I am so much in love with her. Well, who is it, Alex? It's Margaret. I'm madly in love with Margaret Mead. Oh, say I. I run over to Margaret Mead. Do you realize that the beautiful 18-year-old Alex is madly in love with you? She said, he said, of course he is, everybody is. <laughs> well, why is that so? Very simple, I am bread to them, they are wine to me. <laughs> and that's very important. The great loving between the generations that we have forgotten. But that's what I saw, great loving between the generations, which is one of the most important ways of being and doing and discovery that we can have in this whole and holy time of ours. Oh, friends, we are quantum jumpers. 
truly we are. We're in the time where a whole system transition. We're in the very depths of reality are rising and inviting us to be its partners. <laughs> its partners, yes. How many of you feel, you don't know, I don't know, I don't know. well, jump out of that. Or I'll send Teilhard around to run and knock you down so that you can find profoundly new ways of being. I have a very great friend, my best friend is here, who is my co-partner in all my work. Some of you know her, she's a great Shakespearean actor. It's considered to be the soul of Ashlyn, Peggy Rubin. Peggy, would you stand up? Do you know Peggy? Yeah. Peggy, what would you add to all of this? Come, come here, Peggy. You've seen Peggy playing Shakespeare, playing, directing him so much. What would you add to all of this? Well, I, I love the whole thing of quantum physics, mechanics, all of it, because everybody says it's a little bit crazy. It is. And everybody says that if you think you know it, you're wrong. So it, it's a playful, intense connectivity, the possibility, as Gina demonstrated, of being one thing in one moment and the exact opposite somewhere else. You can be a wave and a particle at the same time until somebody chooses ah you're away no you want to go so as i say and the principle of complementarity which is what i appreciate the most which is that it's this way and that way. I, I can be heard in any theater in the world <laughs> <laughs> that that's a quote from mrs pat campbell by the way so, so just just that that the the when you're at the depths of, of sorrow, anguish, and pain, the exact complement is also there. And travel to that side. There's Peggy Dean. <laughs> My goodness, friends are here. How lovely. How great to see you. Okay. Yeah, this is one hot group. And you've got, you've got a minister who can play the piano. <laughs> and sing. And write music. Holy moly. No wonder it's jump time. So, yes. I, get, get me on stage and it's hard to get me off. So. No, you won't want this one. You want that one? Are you going to sit for a while? Because I really want all of you to close your eyes and hear these great words by Christopher Fry that to me... Can I sit? No, I'm, I have my eyes closed, so, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so close your eyes and listen to the words, because they tell the truth of who and what you really, really are. And these are the words. The human heart can go to the lengths of God. Dark and cold we may be, but this is no winter now. The frozen misery of centuries cracks, breaks, begins to move. The thunder is the thunder of the flood, the flow, the upstart spring. Thank God our time is now. When wrong comes up to meet us everywhere, never to leave us till we take the longest stride of soul folk ever took. Affairs are now soul-sized. The enterprise is exploration into God. What are you making for? Hmm? It takes so many thousand years to wake. But shall we wake for pity's sake? I think we shall. I know we will. You are the people of the jump time. You are the people of the great transition. You are the people of the love. 
that transcends all negative warnings. You have not bored God because you are the evolutionary ones. And you don't have to go out and do fancy things. You really don't. Just sending from your heart goodwill, good wishes, much loving, that is sufficient. And then if you have to get up and do physical things of active health, you will know. So friends, I say, these are the times, and you are the people. Yes. <laughs>